it's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm excited today. Uh, we have a new channel we're going to look at. Uh, this is from a world-renowned author, um, Dilip Sarkar. And I hope, sir, that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, I reached out to him. He was more than gracious to allow me to uh, share this video with all of our family members here on the channel and uh, I know I'm going to learn from him. Um, we're of course going to be talking about or learning about uh, the Battle of Britain as it is started this week um, or did it? When did it start? And that is the topic he's going to be discussing today so I'm excited to see this come sit with me on this big fake couch and uh, hopefully you'll learn something as well. Um, please go support his channel. I'll leave the links in the description to this video and to his channel. So hop on over there. I mean, it's if you want to know anything about the Battle of Britain, which I do because it's history that uh, we only get a brief, you know, uh, you know, glimpse of over here in the states. But it's such a an important moment in time uh go to his channel because and i i hope to do more and learn more from him uh, down the road for sure but uh this is a good good starting off point we're going to watch some videos uh, and try to learn as much as we can uh, hopefully it sticks that's the only the, the issue i get so much information that it's hard for it to just stick there it it, it gets in there and it just kind of finds a little corner and it just kind of sits there until something, you know, causes it to pop up and I'll go, oh yeah, you know, but I'm going to learn something today, obviously. Uh, so hopefully you will too. Um, we have a live stream Sunday. Uh, I don't know exactly what time it's saying for you. Uh, me, it says 9 a.m. Some people brought up that uh, the eight hour difference is not so much that. It could be nine hours. Um Different. So let me know exactly what time it is scheduled on your end. I'm more than happy to move it up an hour. Um, Monday's probably, yeah, been told that some people might be at work. And I'm just trying to get it to where um, most people can join. And I know with the big soccer match going on, I just don't. Uh, my schedule is a little wonky and... Um, this is really the only time I have to do it this weekend. So I'm just going to leave it on Sunday. If you can make it, that's great. If you can't, I totally understand. This is a big deal, the final of Euro. So I get it. But if for those of you who can, so it's either going to be at what it's scheduled at now or an hour early. So just kind of keep an eye on Uh I will adjust the time, but just kind of make sure to check back in tomorrow to, to see um, what time it's actually starting on your end. I, I thought it was eight hours difference, but some people are saying it might be nine hours difference between us. I don't know. I'm a little confused there. Uh, but anyway, come sit with us. We're going to jump right into uh, Did the Battle of Britain Start on the Wrong Day is the title of this video. Again, please go support deal up in his channel. I'm truly honored that he has given this blessing uh, for us to learn from him and uh, let's do it. Okay so what we're going to talk about is when did the Battle of Britain begin and when did it end and what actually was Hitler's intention uh, and it's very interesting to see how this whole thing has evolved and indeed uh, the level of confusion around those subjects then and now. So I've really studied this in great detail. I mean, as I'm sure most of you know, I'm writing an eight volume uh, official history of the Battle of Britain for the Battle of Britain Memorial Trust. And the first two volumes uh, are now available. It is December, 2023. So there'll be eight altogether. And the project is a million words, pretty much I would think wow. by the time we've finished. 
So when you, you're doing a project like that, you really are looking at things in, in really microscopic detail and checking uh, all of the facts, all of the documents and so on and so forth. And this is so complicated. Um, there are so many dates involved with this that are significant. Now, 24th of May, 1945, the Air Ministry decided that they were going to recognize fighter air crew who had flown operationally in the Battle of Britain with the award of a bronze class, which will be worn on the 1939-45 star, the Battle of Britain class. Uh, and then on the 23rd of July, 1945, the Air Ministry um, decide on the dates. That is the 10th of July, 1940, to the 31st of October, 1940, being the date between which the Battle of Britain was fought. So then we go to the 11th of September, 1946, and Lord Dowding, who was an Air Chief Marshal, was Commander-in-Chief of Fighter Command during the Battle of Britain, uh, published his dispatch on the Battle of Britain in the London Gazette, very important document, uh, in which he arbitrarily, in his words, chose 10th of July 1940 as the start date of the Battle of Britain. Now, certainly there was heavy fighting on that day, in fact, the heaviest fighting so far, uh, involving over 100 aircraft over the Channel, and that's really why Dowding chose that date, because he saw it as an escalation in the fighting. Uh, although, as he said himself, for, for him personally, the Battle of Britain really began in September 1939. And you can see exactly yeah. what he's talking about because Dowding's perspective on this is preparing for this aerial assault oh. that uh, he believes is coming. And he was right, wasn't That's he? That's right. Um, but anyway, the thing was that some historians have argued that the Battle of Britain began with the Dunkirk air fighting. And that's just simply not the case. If the Battle of Britain is fought to deny the Germans the aerial supremacy required for a seaborne invasion of England, that can't possibly be the case because it was not, none of those air operations, none of that air fighting was appended to Operation Sea Lion as it became a plan to invade Britain by sea. Now, therefore, the Germans surely then, their strategy must dictate the Battle of Britain's start and end because sure. it's got to be the aggressor, it's got to be the attacker, hasn't it, who has the initiative, who, who is saying, we're going to invade you, and start. from now on, yeah. all of our operations are ended to that objective. And really, that, that's what happened. To be fair, Germany's lightning fast uh, advance to the channel left everybody stunned, not least Hitler. Nobody expected it. So suddenly there are airfields in the Pas de Calais uh, that put even London within range of the Messerschmitt 109. Uh, and this, this is what provided the opportunity. It was unexpected, this unique opportunity. And again, other historians have argued that Hitler, had he come straight on after Dunkirk without uh, uh, um, this sort of prevarication, if you like, um, before the British army had a chance to regroup and reorganise itself, then he could have literally walked straight in. Well, I mean, that's not true either because the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy would have had quite a lot to say about that, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah. that wouldn't have been possible anyway because the channel ports had been bombed and devastated and they were in a mess. So there was a lot of clear-up operation required to make the ports properly operational again. Then, of course, you've got to assemble this great fleet of barges right. that is going to uh, transport the German divisions across the channel. So it wasn't as simple as that. But after the Dunkirk fighting, there was certainly a, a lull until the night of the 18th, 19th of June, 1940, when about 70 Heinkel 111 bombers ranged over eastern England uh, and uh, uh, there were a number shot down. In fact, that night, uh, Sailor Milan of 74 Squadron, a legendary South African, uh, uh, scored the, the Spitfires for not turn and kill. In fact, he got two that night, two Heinkel bombers. So 
that was really the first attack. And then it goes quiet again until the fighting starts over the channel. And this is 2nd of July, 1940. That date uh, is significant because the fighting over the channel started that day. And it's also the day that the um, Oberkommando uh, de Verma informed the Verma that preparations were to be made for a seaborne invasion of Britain. So you could definitely argue a case for the 2nd of July uh, being the start date of the Battle of Britain. Hitler was well aware of what a hazardous undertaking such an operation would be. Uh, he was fearful of the Royal Navy. There was a lot of um, differences of opinion between the Army, the Navy and the Luftwaffe about the whole thing. They've got no experience of a combined operation of this nature. And look how long D-Day took to, took to plan and organize and deliver. You know, and, and this is all a lash-up job. This is overnight, virtually, this opportunity. Yeah. But Hitler's actual uh, preferred strategy against Britain was not an all-out air offensive. It was not even an all-out war. He was very reluctant to go to war with Britain. And... Uh, what, what his intention was to, to achieve a swift victory, which is what he needed, uh, was blockade and diplomacy. And this is what Hitler force was them. very good at. Yeah, to force Britain. If you study uh, the, the late 1930s and the uh, Chamberlain's policy of appeasement and all of this that led to Munich and so on and so forth, um, Hitler played brinkmanship and he played it very well. He preyed on people's fear of war and fear of aerial bombardment after Granica, certainly. And it was this business, this fighting over the channel with, with Oberst uh, Fink of uh, Kampfgeschwader II, uh, his Dornier bombers playing a big part in these attacks on shipping and um, uh, the channel targets, Dover, channel ports, you know, all that sort of stuff. And these attacks are getting bigger and bigger. So we get to the 10th of July. But this is bluff. This is air fleet diplomacy. This is Hitler playing brinkmanship. And what he's doing is trying to frighten Britain into surrendering. So that, uh, you know, what he's saying is, this is our air force. This is what we can achieve. And we can turn the heat onto you, onto mainland Britain. Now, the Danes surrendered at the very threat of it. And the world had seen what had happened with uh, Warsaw, Rotterdam, uh, and, and as I said earlier, Guernica in the Spanish Civil War in the mid-30s. So, you know, there was a fear of air, uh, of air power uh, and of aerial bombardment. And this is what it was trying to do. But there is no way that Churchill and the War Cabinet are going to give in to this. But Hitler is, is absolutely deluded that there is still possibility that Britain will come to terms. So constantly, this brinkmanship is going on, and it's building up to his speech in the Reichstag on the 19th of July. And three days before that, well, in fact, going back to the 13th of July, the Oberkommando de Heer, the Army High Command, they issued uh, an invasion plan, which ultimately became Operation Sea Lion. So we can see this is starting to develop now. Yeah, then certainly. 13th of July, um, yeah, that was 13th of July. 16th of July, we have this oft quoted Fuhrer Directive number 16, where Hitler is um, saying that uh, Germany is going to prepare and, if necessary, carry out a landing operation to eliminate Britain as a base from which war can be waged against Germany. So Again, people quote that, this is Hitler's intention, this is what's happening. But he still doesn't do that. And it, it's building up to this 19th of July speech where he is going to make his last appeal to reason to Britain to accept terms. Now, that would have been his preferred option, of course. Britain accepts terms uh, and then he can turn his focus eastwards to Russia, which was always his intention anyway. So that's not going to happen. Churchill uh, refused to respond. He said that he wasn't actually on speaking terms with her hit. <laughs> but then it was decided that there should Classic be a full response. 
And on the 22nd of July, Lord Halifax broadcast an indirect response, which made it quite clear that Britain were, were fully intended to fight on, no matter what. Uh, and this is interesting because Churchill, as a historian, knew that states that uh, surrender, they just disappear. But states that go down fighting, their spirit is alive and they will be reborn. And we're even seeing that in the world today, aren't we, with what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, incredible parallel there. So Halifax mm. uh, makes this quite clear. Now, this is a powerful message because Lord Halifax, or Lord Holy Fox, as he was called, <laughs> was a, a primary supporter of Chamberlain's appeasement policy. So the fact that Halifax, really? of all people, is delivering this Britain's fighting on I did not know he was in that camp with the appeasement group. Wow. Holy Fox. I think I have heard that before, um, of that moniker. Um, that Churchill quote, though, we're not on speaking terms. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> um just a reminder, go support Dilip um, and his channel. I am gripped right now. <laughs> I could, you know, I've seen a bunch of videos. I've seen, the, of course, the, the movie. I've seen the, uh, or not the movie, but the uh, documentary on Battle of Britain. We, we watched it on this channel. Excellent. Um, but uh, still don't know a whole ton. But this is, this is uh, wonderful. So far, just getting the breakdown and of you know, it like you look on Google when uh, it started. It says July tenth, I believe. July tenth, October thirtieth, I believe is the dates or something, something like that. So just hearing all this and it, yeah, totally makes sense what he's saying. And I'm, it's sinking in. I'm gonna go back just a tad. Halifax of all people is delivering this Britain's fighting on message to Hitler, it is hugely significant for Hitler to receive the, the, the message in that way and from that particular peer. Mm -hmm. So still nothing happens. The Battle of Britain, as it's now called, is carrying on much the same. So why, why then have we got this, this dalliance from Hitler, this prevarication, this... This delay, and this delay, given the vagaries of, of the British weather and the English Channel, uh, is wasting time. It's critical, wasting time. But in the end, after uh, Halifax's rejection of his last appeals to reason, it's clear that there is no choice. Hitler cannot play brinkmanship anymore. There yeah. is no he more room for manoeuvre. It is either. obvious that Britain is not going to surrender and now he has to put his faith in Goering's Luftwaffe. Now, his deputy, Reich Marshal Hermann Goering, uh, was totally confident that his Luftwaffe could beat uh, the Royal Air Force and eliminate the Royal Air Force within four, or four, given four or five days of unbroken weather. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The Luftwaffe's intelligence was dreadful. They simply did not understand the strength of the Royal Air Force, the strength of Vice Command, how and the, the fighting defences were organised, the, uh, the whole thing too. is delusional. But it is not to say that they are not going to try and that they are a fearful air force to be reckoned with, the Luftwaffe. Let's make no mistake about that. And we'll dissect the Luftwaffe in future videos and really look at that uh, in detail. So eventually then, there, there is absolutely no choice but to carry off. And on the uh, 31st of July, by then, Hitler is absolutely, you know, 100%. There is going to be no diplomatic solution. So on that day, he tells General Feldmarschall Walter von Brauchitz, who's the head of the army, and uh, Gross Admiral uh, Eric Rader, the Kriegsmariner chief, that they are going to invade Britain. And he tells them this at a conference at his Berghof Mountain Retreat. And on the same day, uh, uh, Goering meets with his uh, air fleet commanders, General Field Marshal Hugo Sperler, uh, 
Airfleet uh, 3 around the Sherbourg uh, area. And General Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, Luftlos 2, Hardy Calais, which is really going to bear the brunt of the assault uh, on London and the South East. Uh, and and they, they are told that this is what's going to happen. There is going to be um, an extension of the ongoing air offensive and the objectives of this is to destroy fighter command in a line south of the Gloucester to London line. Uh, and then when, um, when that's been achieved, then the air offensive will be extended northwards until all RAF airfields uh, are, are being attacked. So this is a clear escalation. This is now the Battle of Britain. So we've got interesting dates, haven't we? Hmm. 2nd of July, a contender for the start of the Battle of Britain. Um, because then we are talking about invasion. 10th of July, mm, doesn't sit with me. If Dowding was here today, knowing what we know now about the German plans, which wasn't necessarily known when he chose that date, I would like to ask his lordship whether he would stick with that date or whether yeah. he would uh, agree that it should be a different date. And then we've got 31st of July, which is when uh, Hitler, you know, tells uh, von Brauschitz and, and Reda uh, that we're going to have Operation Sea Lion, we're going to have this invasion, and Goering tells his air fleet commanders what the intention is. And it is clear to everybody involved that uh, the... Uh, um, command of the air for the Germans is absolutely prerequisite. That is essential. It has to happen because without control of the air, there is no way an invasion can take place. So, you know, Hitler is saying that the invasion will go ahead providing certain conditions are met. Uh, and the, the absolute prerequisite amongst those conditions, uh, number one priority is control of the air. So the spotlight is now on Goering and the Luftwaffe, big time. So why is it important? Why is it important <laughs> when the Battle of Britain actually started? Well, right. it is important because of the recognition of Fighter Command aircrew with that tiny little bronze with the clasp metal. to the yes. 1939 45 star, the Battle of Britain class, the coveted Battle of Britain class that indicates that the wearer is one of the fabled few. So it is important because what about the pilots who were killed, maimed, missing during those days, 2nd of July to the, to the 9th of July inclusive? They are not amongst the few. And that's why it's important. Oh. I think we need to know when it started. Uh, and the Battle of Britain Memorial Trust uh, it ha has a project now, which I think is splendid. I think it is so important that those people and other people who served during the Battle of Britain in whatever capacity are recognized in some way. And down at the National Memorial, high on the cliffs overlooking Folkestone, Beautiful. we have the, the airmen sat gazing out across the channel, which is the memorial to the few. And now around it are going to be blades of glory, which are tiles with names inscribed uh, of people nominated by the public. So uh, I would like to see people like ferry pilot Alec Bird, uh, so recognised and remembered, who rammed a Junkers 88 on the 25th of July. Because he's a ferry pilot, he's not one of the few. Sergeant wow. Bruce Hancock uh, collided or rammed with a Heichel bomber, but because he was with training command, he's not one of the few. You know, So that's brilliant that that's going to happen. That is at last. Um, some recognition. So we've now definitely got the Battle of Britain. Now we're into the 31st of July and Hitler gives Goering until the 15th of September to achieve aerial supremacy. And the idea is that the whole thing is really going to escalate now. And uh, it, it, these attacks on shipping and the channel ports uh, are going to increase in intensity and it's going to really get going on the 12th of August was the original plan with the Adler Angriff, which is the attack of the Eagles, which is now really going to focus down on the destruction of Pfizer Command. And that's what we'll look at next. So uh, it's a fascinating subject, I think, when you really start looking at the German plans and Hitler's strategy. And as we go through the Battle of Britain, you see how Hitler is thinking. We have some great primary sources like Count Chanu's diary, the Italian foreign minister who watched these events, 
and often met with Hitler uh, and his, uh, his senior Nazi uh, ministers and so on. So, you know, we can see what Hitler is thinking and how this led to what happened the following year in 1941, looking east. And what a lot of people don't realise, I'm going to talk about this in detail because it's really important, is that Hitler's attack on Russia was not in isolation. It also included his, his altered strategy towards Britain. But we'll explain all that another time. Ooh. So there's quite a lot to think about there. Yes. Uh, and it's all in those first two volumes, actually, in great detail. Uh, so we've got up now to the, the Adler and Griff, the attack of the Eagles, and we'll talk about that next time. Please go support Dilip uh, Sarkar MBE. I didn't mention that uh, at the beginning. That's important uh, for he has earned that. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Yes, you look at the history books. Just Googled it before I watched this video to have some sort of like, well, what day did it really start? You know, I just <clears throat> didn't know, really. It says July 10th. Um, so when, when should it be considered? Um, July 10th, he was saying was the busiest day of fighting. So, uh, the air marshal picked that day, but you think, you know, July 2nd, when, you know, things really started moving around, uh, or was it when they said, you know, the plan of the invasion, let's do it. So it's interesting. Um, and it, why? Why does it matter? And he laid it out perfectly. It's all those people who gave their lives and fought before the July 10th arbitrary date that was chosen. And when it comes to being honored and with the medal and, and so on. So hearing about the memorial expanding to those that uh, would encompass those before I think is just wonderful and uh, maybe one day I would love to go pay my respects there um, I just think it's fascinating the will the whole story of uh, Brent, yes airplanes awesome you know the, but just the will of the people enduring the average person enduring the bombing and, and never you know doubting and of course the impeccable and uh, wonderful Churchill who wasn't on speaking terms <laughs> with Hitler I think that's uh, so funny um, thank you Dilip I appreciate you for allowing us to learn from you uh, please everyone I encourage you to go to his channel and uh, get lost and just submerge yourself he there's a lot of videos here. I just started with, with this one because I thought it'd be a good introduction into uh, me learning more about Battle of Britain uh, since here we are um, uh, 84 years, right? 84 years ago. So, I hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. Thanks so much for coming. Let me know... Um, I'm probably just going to keep it on Sunday, the the live stream. Uh, but let me know if I need to move the time up. Let me know what time it's saying for the live stream on your end. I don't know exactly. It just says 9 a.m. my time. Um, I can certainly move it up to 8. That's not a problem uh, if that works. I'd like to give as much people the opportunity to join us as they can. So uh, let me know that. Um, have a great day. Hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe if I haven't said that already. And we will see you, I think I'll be able to see you tomorrow morning. Maybe? I don't know. Take care. Bye. Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark.